<laughs> yeah. Stole drags, Reno. This year, Brian Bowen is practicing right here in Red Bluff. All right, guys, so I'm excited to announce that um, I've created a company called Bowen Arrow LLC. My last name's Bowen Arrow, A E R O, Bowen Arrow. It's a little play on words. Um, because uh, working with Behringer to create this uh, brake system for the Kit Fox 7, um, they asked me if I was interested in being a dealer slash tech rep for them um, for the Kit Fox. And after going through the process and being able to share that information with anyone who wants to put the system on, I said, sure, let's do that. So we've come to an agreement on that, and um, I'm happy to say that um, I'm your guy if you want to go to uh, Behringer system on your Kit Fox. So currently we have the solution for the 5 through 7, which um, I showed you yesterday or the other day in the video. And we'll be installing that here in the next couple days on the 5 and testing it. Uh, I'd like to start by doing some stop tests with the Grove system so I can go back and do the stop test with the Behringer once it's installed and show you guys the, the difference in the braking power. So I'll be doing the brake stop test with the Grove hopefully tomorrow morning um, and then uh, get this system installed hopefully sometime in the next week or so. Uh, borrowing, borrowing any complications with the install, I hope to have um, some results from those tests here in the next week or two. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, please go ahead and send me an, an email to bowenarrow at yahoo.com. Um, that's going to be the temporary email address for right now as we get this whole thing rolling. And uh, we are working on a website. Um, and uh, be more information on that as, as we move forward. Um, I'm real excited that I have the system now in hand and I can install it and, and see um, how it performs. I'm also real excited to see the weight difference. So we'll be weighing the Grove system as it comes off and we're gonna weigh this system before it goes back on. Stay tuned in this video and we'll, uh, we'll get you uh, some results on that brake um, test and some video on how to install them on the Kivox 5. So thanks for watching. All right, so what I'm doing is this um, axle that I had from TK1 Racing had an extra inch and a half on it with the threading, and that was to make it fit for the Grove setup. It had spacers in there, get the spacing right for the, uh, the Grove brakes. With the Behringer, you don't need that, so what you would do if you're gonna do the TK1 um, setup is just order the Highlander axle, which is basically this. I think it is still threaded, but it's shorter by an inch and a half, so it's just four and a half inches of axle outside of the portion that's gonna go inside the gear leg. So I just cut it down to four and a half, and then that slips right into this um, Behringer axle sleeve. It's a bigger diameter for the bearing on the back and smaller on the front. Um, that's the way the wheel works. They got a big bearing in the back, small bearing in the front. So by doing that, I'll uh, get this back plate lined up with the um, plate that that mounts to on the gear legs and that gives me the, the, the proper spacing and still leaves me all of all the mounting holes I was going to cut off the back but then it makes it kind of a short stubby piece that's inside uh, it's cut off cut off the threads okay so now you can see the axle sits flush with the back plate on the gear leg pull that up see the four and a half inch axle and then this is just a sleeve that slides over it. The holes line up. Really beefy setup. Um, especially with Tony's gear legs. You'll notice quite a bit of difference in these gear legs over some of the others that are manufactured. And then it has this piece here. You get a lot of torsion right here at the bottom of the gear leg. And this is where they typically break. And instead of just having the axle bolted out, <clears throat> like most axles just bolt to this plate and that's your brake point right there. This axle comes all the way into the sleeve all the way back to this point. So you have a very strong attachment um, down at the bottom of the gear leg. So if you're gonna have a failure it's gonna be bending these tubes or up at the fuselage not with the wheel falling off. And that's important because if your wheel falls off you're gonna dig in and flip over. If you have a hard landing and just bend the gear leg 
you can at least roll out from it and just have to replace the landing gear. All right, guys, we got uh, the right wheel on, mounted up. Just haven't connected the brake line. Um, the axle's all mounted up. I'll show you how that works on the other side. Uh, didn't bring my thread sealant, so I can't do that last bit on the brake connection on that side. So I'm gonna work on getting the other one set up. It is hot. I'm already at 92 degrees here and ready. Um, before I put any more stuff on though, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh it up so I get an idea of uh, the weight comparison between the Grove slash Cleveland system and the Behringer. All right, so here's the axle sleeve with the caliper. Now, in addition, you have this axle, but this is already on the airplane. I actually cut off an inch and a half, so this is gonna be lighter than the existing. So all I'm adding is this weight minus the piece I took off of there. So I'm, I'll weigh these and find the difference, and then we'll see what we're actually adding. But right here, it's 2.98 pounds for the caliper. It's actually the Cleveland. This is the Cleveland wheel with the Cleveland disc on a 21, 26 inch Alaska bush wheel. And we're looking at 27.1. Okay, 24.2, 2.9 pounds lighter is the Grove wheel on the 29 inch uh, ultralight bush wheel. Now the bush wheel this isn't the Airstreak 2.0 like I thought it was. This is the ultralight, which is eight pounds lighter than the 29, but it's actually about the same weight as the 26. So the tires are very comparable. That gives you 2.9 pounds lighter between the wheel setup. Now granted, the disc is not attached to this one because it's on the uh, axle. So we'll put those weights in when we compare the total system. All right, we are Behringer installed, short of the brake line. So the wheels are on. I've changed out the axles. Look at those beautiful double caliper brakes. So the the uh, old Grove caliper is here. So I'll take that brake line off tomorrow, install it right here, and then bleed out through the, the system through there, and uh, go out and test them. So, but the install is done with the wheels and the axles. And to be honest, it was super easy with Tony's uh, landing gear. All I did was put the shorter, there's the old axle, the shorter axle on, and these bolt right up. Um, so you're talking, if you have everything you need with the bolts and the axle, you could do this in uh, probably a whole thing, changing it out, bleeding the brake systems, you could do it in two to three hours. Wow, look at that. That looks awesome. All right, so the Behringer install is done. Brakes have been bled. I'll go into detail on that some other time. <clears throat> but while I was at it, had the uh, time to do it, I went ahead and removed the, um, yeah, let's see if we get that to, removed the unused instruments that are redundant by the EFIS. And believe it or not, that removed three pounds. So between the uh, six pounds on the wheels and that's not finalized yet. Let me run the numbers and give you the actual difference, but it's close to six pounds on the tires and three on the instrument. I'm pretty close to 10 pounds removed, nine, in this uh, little process here. So uh, pretty excited about that. So I'm gonna go out and gotta break the pads in. And they say 20 to 30 landings with easy breaks before doing any hard tests. So. I won't be doing that comparison test till next week because I want to get those 20 landings in to condition the brakes properly. Nice, easy application. 
All right, brake test day. So I've got the uh, new Behringer brakes on. Drop it in some oil real quick. We're gonna head down to Red Bluff and do the proper brake in on these brakes. I gotta do 20 landings before I get full power. We've already done the 1500 foot drag uh, on the brakes. You taxi for 1500 feet with light brake pressure and then two brakes from 30 knots lightly. So those are done. Um, Hoping to see better braking power once they're broke in, but they say you only have 50% to start with. So if, uh, if if that's where it's at, that'd be good. So let's go fly, and we'll see how uh, it turns out at the end of the day whether we need to actually change out the master cylinders from their groves or not. Well, good morning guys. I'm not doing great with the filming of this brake test. Uh, that is not intentional. Uh, I forgot the case for the camera I'm holding. I do have the camera out on the wing running to show the brakes this time better than the uh, iPhone footage I have the first one. I did mark it off though. It's 264 feet. 65, somewhere in there. Um, for the first brake test with the all grove system. So I'll be doing the same thing here with just the Behringer wheels and brakes with the Grove Masters. And we'll compare that. And uh, depending on how those turn out, I uh, maybe if I have time before, you know, put the Behringer Master cylinders on as well and do it a third time. Okay, so look out there. Last time I stopped between the two hangers, so it's a decisive shorter stop with these brakes. I will measure them out the same way I measured it last time and give you the results, but uh, quite a bit better. So I'm real excited about those uh, brake results on the stop test. I and mean, that's the true test of the brakes is whether or not they stop. So what would happen with the groves is it would start braking really hard, but then it would fade. And as you were getting to the point where you come to a stop, you really had to really press hard on the pedals to get it to actually stop. Now these come on a little easier, but they're stronger through the whole stop. And uh, I'm guessing it was probably a good 50 feet shorter. So I'll measure it again like I did last time. And it's only gonna improve by putting the uh, Behringer Master Cylinders in as well. So, uh, great test results, I'm real excited, and you know, other than them looking badass, they work good too. So, uh, the other uh, side of that bow and arrow is, um, as I develop solutions to problems on this build, um, instead of doing them one-off, um, there's been some people who ask me about some of the solutions, you know, are you going to provide that to other people? And um, at first, I didn't really think that I wanted to do that um, because I'd like to focus on the build, and um, it's not really a, a large enough market to create a living doing, uh, you know, products for for these airplanes. Um, but at the same time, it's it, I've already worked out some of the solutions, and so if I can work a way, work out a way to provide those solutions to other people, and I'd be helping you guys out with your build, or if you have, if there's a product I come up with that you want on your aircraft, then uh, I'd love to be able to, to provide that to you. And so the first one I want to uh, introduce as we go through the development is um, what we're calling the stiff grip. This is a, a grip that will go on the control stick. Um, and I'm sure some of you guys have seen people use these um, bicycle grips, but there's never been a solution uh, put out there for how to, how to integrate the push to talk button into the grip that's that's a, a solid solution. So what I did was went ahead and developed this uh, machined piece and it is threaded for the switch. 
Um, I have a friend of mine in Oregon who I've been working with um, to develop that. I'll have quite a few options uh, to start with with the grips and if you guys have a particular grip you like uh, I can also get that uh, that style as well. They have the normal size ones, they have the shorties. This is a, a leather stitched. Uh, <clears throat> also the foam one which I'll show a picture of that's installed on my five. Um, they have these palm grips which I really like. I'll be putting these on the seven. Um, they just feel good. That support up in your palm. Um, so those are available in rubber. Um, so you pretty much have foam, you have rubber, you have leather, fake leather, um, all different kinds of options for the grip. The um, push to talk switch dome will fit in, in pretty much all of them. So um, the reason I did this was I was really not happy with the options that are out there commercially. Uh, I've been running this Arrow K um, grip, which, you know, it's ergonomically designed for your hand. It's okay. I've had this on the Kit Fox 5 for, for years, but I didn't like the way it attached. It's always, the screw's always loosening up and then it, it has some play in it. And the switches that are installed, they're glued in and the, the guy I bought the plane from had already done that. So one switch sits high, the other one sits really low. It just wasn't done nice. So I originally pulled these off and I bought uh, what I thought would be the better solution from Aircraft Spruce. And I don't know the brand of these. I could look it up, but I don't want to bash it either. But, you know, it's this foam grip. It's it's really flimsy. It's got a plastic rubber head that, and it flexes like quite a bit. And so I just, I just really wasn't happy with that limp grip so that's why we've gone to a nice stiff grip <laughs> and um, this is a, I'm pretty happy with this solution I've been running it now for about a month on the five and I love the way it feels it's a really um, comfortable grip so um, I'll be making or putting together a website we're kind of in the process of doing that and we'll provide information about the Behringer's uh, brakes and the grips and as I work um, on other solutions that could potentially be uh, products um, I will go ahead and, and uh, try to share those if we can manufacture them uh, without too much cost and I can provide it at a, a reasonable price. Uh, I'd like to do that. You know, along with that, there is the cost of the overhead. I mean, there's the business costs, the accounting, the, you know, all that stuff that goes along with the business. If you guys are, you know, business savvy, you know that it's not as simple as just saying, hey, I made this, let's sell it. You got to have, uh, you know, the structure in place. And so that has to be passed on with the cost of these things. So um, I, I hope to be um, very comparable with these other two options uh, in price because I think it's a better product. So um, you can expect them to be, you know, about the same cost I think as the other other options out there. And I think it will uh, it will be successful because it's, it's a better grip. Um, so I'm pretty excited to, to uh, announce that. Um, Hit me with some, some comments and some emails at that bow and arrow at yahoo.com. Again, that's a temporary email. Once we get the website set up, we'll host our own emails. But um, in the meantime, I have had a lot of interest about these when they, you know, people have picked them out in the videos and uh, have made comments. So um, just wanted to let you know what I'm working on. That's in the final stages, and we, we can really uh, probably start um, shipping those out here in the next month or so. So... Uh, we're still working on the anodization process, um, so you we definitely can offer them in the bare aluminum, um, but we're working on doing a black and a red anodization for the first run. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. Um, it's obviously something, you know, if you had the time and the equipment, you could co come up with your own solution, but um, I've already done all that work, and if you're willing to, uh, you know, pay the cost of what it cost me to, to produce them, you know, plus the overhead, then and I can get you a set of them. So along with that, Behringer, super excited about that. Uh, these brakes are the most beautiful uh, brake system on the market by far. So let's uh, go ahead and confirm that they're also the best performing by doing these tests. So stay tuned in this video and we'll, uh, we'll get you uh, some results on that brake um, test and some video on how to install them on the Kivox 5. So thanks for watching.